गुरुवे गौर चंजय रिकायत डाले कृष्ण कृष्ण भक्ताय तार भक्ताय नमो नम पंच कल्प त्रिव्य कृप सिंधु भय भज पति भावने व्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जाय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री आद्वैत गधार शिव सारे श्री गौर भक्तविंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे धन भक्त नाम दिवोतीस सो दिस इज अ वेरी शॉर्ट वीडियो um to answer a few questions uh one that came in this morning and a couple of questions that I've had which of course over the Gaur Purnim uh celebrations that uh, I was unable to get to and uh, before beginning anything I want to offer my uh dandavat pranam to his holiness Kadamba Kanana Swami who has transitioned and gone on to uh higher service um and to all of his uh, disciples um uh, you should take this as a very deep time to uh contemplate doing very deep bhajan uh, whenever shri guru uh into samadhi or leaves the physical presence of the disciple that becomes the impetus for developing the mood of separation truly for the first time uh we've not met shri man mahaprabhu or radha and krishna perhaps we have not become perfect so to experience the mood of separation in a transcendental way first takes place between the sishya and shri guru so this is that opportunity to do deep bhajan in a deep mood of separation and that's what causes it is the essential cause uh, in the growth of inner development in terms of bhakti so first there should be deep grieving and and mood of separation should be experienced and then <clears throat> we should think oh i will associate with my guru dev now via the mechanism of very very deep bhajan life so very deep chanting of your hari naam a very deep chanting of diksha mantras for those who have received diksha proper meditation on the guru mantra and guru gayatri because guru mantra guru gayatri they are not different from shri guru and this becomes the opportunity under which to mm, have association on a heart level with shri guru so very important to deepen your bhajan sadhan uh and in this way to create a deep sense of uh a deep attachment rupa goswami pad is described in relation to guru tattva that guru padasraya tata diksha shikshari vishram dena guru seva so the objective is this vishram dena seva the word vishrambra means a sense of intimacy heart to heart that ultimately a kind of taratmik mood taratmik means when the heart becomes one uh this nagaratam das tako has mentioned uh guru mukha padma vakya chitate kariyaika that our chitta our consciousness should become one with the hari katha and agya means order of shri guru so what instructions your guru pada padma gave how to do seva what seva to do plus always the instructions on how to do bhajan you should take very very deeply and in doing so you'll find that your inner growth will become very expedited jai hari bol sadan sid prabhu dhanyavad pranam all devotees of come on so there are a few short questions they're not very long uh one question was written by a dear god brother of mine um let me take a look at the question oh the question was regarding shri navadeep da mahatma of shri bhakti vinod thakur uh there shri bhakti vinod thakur he mentions has spoken that you cannot measure the dam yet a few short pages away Shri Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives a very a uh, descriptive measurement of Shri Navadvip Dham. So he was asking how to reconcile this. So the reconciliation is that there are two kinds of angle of vision here. One is the angle of vision 
of the aprakrita nature of the dham. The aprakrita nature of the dham, meaning the, the potency and function of the dham as a spiritual substance cannot be measured. So you cannot, like I'm giving the example, it's mentioned as Satata Koti Gopi Madhava Man. Srila Bhaktivinoda was written one bhajan. So it means one billion gopis have gathered at Vamsivat in preparation for us. So anybody who's been to Vrindavan, you've been to Vamsivat, then in your mind you may think how one billion people can fit in all of Uttar Pradesh, what to speak of, <laughs> what to speak of at Vamsivat. But our Acharyas have given so many explanations that Dham has the ability to contract and expand and so many other things. But the essential thing they're describing is the aprakrita nature of the Dham. That it is a bhav. And a bhav cannot have any material measurement. How much does Radha love Krishna? How much does Krishna love Radha? Can you measure? Can you give a metric? How much love is present in the root of Mahaprabhu as Rasaraj and Mahabhav in one root? How much love is there? Can you give any metric? So that which is essentially uh, beyond material facility, then that thing cannot be measured. So the Dham has that feature, that it is aprakrita, means it's beyond material facility. Right? And it's mentioned there, ah, aprakrita vastu na gochara. So that which is aprakrita, the vastu, the substance which is a transcendental, by prakrit senses we cannot measure. So then why does Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur then go on to give measurements of Srinavadi Dham, just like we say, the 84 crores or 32 square miles of Braj, etc., etc., 64, excuse me, square miles of Braj. Why? Why do we say like that? Right? Because what is manifest to <laughs> the Bhada Jiva, that thing is what is being measured. And that's being measured only to also establish its glory. That this 32 square miles, 64 square miles, etc., etc., or this uh, dimension, etc., etc., it is full of transcendental potency. So you need to see from both angles. So from the angle of the um, Prakrit vision of the Sadaka, they may analyze it's this long, this wide, this many miles, etc., etc. But it's not saying that it is a limited space because in its aprakrita nature, it's aprakrita bhav, it's mood. Because the, the Dham, once it was asked, there was a discussion about Krishna never taking, taking one step out of Vrindavan, but at the same time reconciling how he goes to Mathura and to Dwarka. So I've spoken on many times of Harikata. First, the idea that Mathura and Dwarka are actually virohe prakosh. It means they are chambers of separation in relation to Braj. So from that angle of vision, we don't see Mathura and Dwarka as separate places. We see that they're actually chambers of Braj for the mood of separation to be enhanced. And so that's one vision that ties that Krishna is not leaving Braj because by Bhav, Krishna never leaves Vrindavan. Therefore, we see that in, quote, Dwarka, he's completely absorbed in the mood of separation from Brijabhasis. So his bhav is the reality of his station or his locus, right? Like we may have our locale in Alachua, Florida, but my Guru Padapadma is told, you should do bhajan always meditating uh, since you cannot physically be in Braj, by mind and by heart, you should be in Braj. So we consider that Brajadham is unlimited. It is transcendent, it is unlimited. Right? So that Braja Dham is a bhav, not just a physical locale. For the sake of the sadaka who wants to get a geographical analysis of any dham, was located here and it has this dimension, etc., etc. But it's not uh, in contradiction of the aprakrita nature of the dham, that it is unlimited in power, unlimited in scope, etc., etc. So this is how it will be reconciled. That from one angle of vision, he's uh, speaking from the idea of sadhakas. Right? And also for those who are not yet even sadhakas, but explaining to them the glory of this place, which constitutes so many miles, it's in such and such a location, etc. But those who are 
either sadhakas or aspiring sadhakas, they'll understand it from the other angle of vision also. This is the aprakrita vastu. It is the transcendental dham which has descended onto the plane of the vision of the spiritual aspirants and those in this material jagat. You understand? So hopefully this was helpful, Prabhuji. If not, then I'll communicate again on the messenger. Uh, another question that came in was, yeah, sorry, I have to keep opening the phone. About the nature of hearing, Harikata, the, the person wrote, I just paraphrased it, Harikata that doesn't have any depth. So he was making a reference in the explanations he was given that many times he goes to hear from various sannyasis and so forth, and when they come, they generally speak very generically, uh, like you're not the body, material world is suffering, um, we should you know, try to get out of the material world. Just, so he was kind of going along those lines. So two things should be considered here. Is one, we should consider ourselves very fortunate that we can hear anything in relation to Sri Krishna. <laughs> that if it is a stream of thought that deals with our condition, the reiteration of that condition is not harmful to us. That we're in the state of being bhada jivas. And that from the perspective of self-interest, we are experiencing a vicarious connection with the three modes of material nature and are therefore being taken on a very uh, horrific ride of adiatmic, adibautic, and adidaivic klesh. means miseries coming from our own body and mind, miseries coming from uh, others, and miseries coming from the devatas or natural order of things. Right? To hear that over and over again, there is no problem. Right? So we should not consider it a lacking. Also, for that speaker, it may be because everybody speaks for their own edification as well. So if that person speaking is doing the savor of serving Harikata with that kind of mindset, and for their own edification are reiterating these points, then we should, with great humility, hear and digest and reapply over and over again, like we put tilak each day. So we should apply the tilak of those instructions related to Krishna on our heart every single day, no harm. Another point of view. Sometimes it may be that the depth in the understanding of a devotee may have some limitation. The adhikar may not be so developed. Therefore, in speaking Harikata, the Harikata will be reflective of the Adhikar. Or, worse situation, somebody will speak and their speaking will be not reflective of their Harikar. So both things are bad. So one person, not bad, somebody speaking according to their Adhikar means they may not have understood a lot of depth regarding Gaudiya theology and the inner moods of, of Bhakti, etc., etc., that thing is not bad. They're speaking according to their adhikar. Right? Now, for a person going whose adhikar may be shifted to a, a higher position, then if they are mature, they can still, as I mentioned earlier, take what is being spoken, even if it does not stimulate the particular place of their aspiration in that adhikar, they should still see that it still adds to my foundation in bhakti. Right? That's one perspective. Secondly, if you really have depth of adhikar, from anything that you hear in relation to bhakti, you can glean deeper things. Because Srimad Bhagavatam is such that it's mentioned there. Tulya Bhagavata Krishna Vibhu Savasrai Prati Shloke Prati Akshare Nana Artakoi. So every verse, no, every akshara means every letter of Srimad Bhagavatam Nana Artakai has unlimited meanings. So also your own depth of adhikar in hearing anything can extract a dwani. A dwani means like an echoing of the meaning and that will satisfy your adhikar. But if you only look from the vision of the critique of what you may perceive as the absence of adhikar in that person, which we can't ascertain unless you, like I'm giving one example. I remember one sannyasi who I know to be of very high quality came to give a harikata. And in the harikata, he spoke very basically uh, regarding 
the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Now, Bhagavad Gita has so many different levels. From Samanyan Upakyan to Sava Guyatam Kataha. Right? So, so many levels are there. So, he spoke in like general way. After the class, sitting in a separate place, stimulated by a question that was asked to him, he completely described all kinds of Sava Guyatam Kataha of Bhagavad Gita. So, we should not try to ascertain Adhikar simply by maybe what is the general presentation of a devotee when they're traveling or preaching, etc., etc. We may inquire from them personally, and they may be able to give inspiration to our Adhikar. Now, I, I, I mentioned, also, we'll have to be careful. Always, there should be great humility, and your humility is proportionate to your genuine Adhikar. You understand? Paripokena danya, danya bhav means humility, will be proportionate to your realizations in Krishna consciousness. So if you have a legend in your own mind, conception about yourself related to bhakti, then that could be some difficulty. <laughs> that I am so high class, I only want to hear rasakata, please I can't hear anything about anything else, so forth and so on. Then you, you're probably headed down a dangerous path, first of all. <laughs> Secondly, again, if your adhikar is mature, whatever you will hear will stimulate depth in your adhikar. So that's, that's the sign. If you can only and exclusively hear a certain thing, then you, you need to check the genuineness of your adhikar, right? Also, it may be that hearing in a particular environment may not be so nourishing to your growth. And that becomes a situation in which you then have to make a different kind of analysis. In other words, so now you look. It could perhaps be from institutional considerations that a kind of ceiling is placed on harikata. In other words, perhaps there's an idea, or oh, we should not speak about certain things uh, because these things... Uh, from somebody's perception, we're not emphasized by our acharya. But certainly, I'm giving a practical example. Um, within any sangha, right, when you analyze carefully, uh, so uh, I noticed this come up in ISKCON, so I'm using ISKCON as an example, right? I've heard many high class of harikata, right, from so many stalwart devotees in ISKCON. So this is not something related to like some sweeping analysis, right? But uh, I have also heard. Some devotees speak to the idea that, no, 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 we should not speak to a certain level. Oh, that's too high, or this is like this, or this is like that. That kind of imposition on the individuality of devotees, it could be harmful. Because what it will do is, is institutionally stifle devotees' ability to speak genuine realizations. Secondly, it will stifle the growth of those who are trying to understand by hearing the depth of bhakti theology and bhakti practice, their growth will be stunted by the inability to hear these things. Not only that, but they'll then develop an improper vision of hearing those things. That may also lead to aparad around those who may perceive to be speaking those things. So in many, many different ways, uh, we'll have to analyze when we're hearing Harikata. If you do not hmm, place a ceiling on devotees being able to give genuine expression to genuine Adhikar, that is the most helpful thing. You understand? Krishna Rose Didi, Dandavat. So that is the most helpful thing. That you'll be very organic in your approach to bhakti. Organic means when you plant something and you go through the natural process of watering, giving sunlight, other things, then don't stifle the growth of what it is you plant. So devotees, when they come to the process, they've planted the seed of bhakti with the idea to water it through shravan and kirtan, means hearing and speaking of harikata, it's also kirtan. Understand? My Guru Parapadma used to mention that Sri Shukadeva Goswami is greatest of all kinds of kirtaniya because he spoke Srimad Bhagavatam. So we don't want to stifle that. 
because it is harmful both to the growth of those who are doing seva to speaking harikata and the seva of the shrota or hearers of the harikata. You understand? Same time, if there are mature devotees, they will be able to ascertain if somebody is speaking way beyond their adhikar also. And even in that particular case, first, obviously in a private setting, we should sit to get some perspective. Is this genuine or this person is speaking way beyond their adhikar? You have somebody that's speaking about high class of things in uh, Geet Govinda, this or that. You'll sit with them and see, do they understand what is Vachu Vegam, Manasa Kota Vegam? Have they studied Manasiksha Ragnar Das Koshani Pad? You understand? Do they have some Tattva Siddhanta platform, etc.? Or have they simply ordered books and read the books and they're regurgitating what they read, but they're not clear how to understand? How to understand it? You understand? So, but also, even that should not be judged from, done, excuse me, from a platform of being judgmental. Oh, this person probably is bogus, etc., etc. Let me go and, and give the challenge of Adhikar, the Adhikar litmus test or something. Don't do like that. Just be very humble because Vaishnav Maitri is very important. It means Vaishnav friendship. So we could sit and you can ask. Oh, Prabhuji, you are mentioning this point from Putkari Kavari or this grunt of our Goshamis. And I was wondering, how does that relate to this point? And bring it to a level of Adhikar what should be mm, foundational or mm, a platform to that kind of harikata. I have many God brothers who speak very high class of kata, but if you speak to them about Tattva Siddhanta, ho, oh, very high class. <laughs> you understand? So their kata is built on a platform. You understand? I also sometimes take great inspiration in repeating harikata I've heard from my guru and Guru Vargas. And that kata sometimes has some depth, uh, by metric we could say has some depth. But I don't want to speak it if I don't have the foundation for verifying those things. I remember many times I've spoken some harikata and afterwards I'll receive messages of Buji, where is that? Where is this written? So forth, so forth. So I tried, I just did service to harikata for Sri Gorapanim on our Bhakti Zoom. Uh, with the Bhakti Zoom Seva team, which I'm also so indebted to because I think at this time it is such a enormous service in so many ways. I don't want to detract from what we're speaking here, but the Bhakti Zoom Seva team has managed to not only be able to be a great source of internationally presenting each festival, each major uh, event within our Vaishnav uh, community, but they've been able to do so in a non-sectarian way where we've been able to have virtually the association of so many high class of Vaishnavs from so many different institutions and sanghas and so forth in such a beautiful format. So it is such a wonderful thing and I'm very indebted always to all of the sevaks at the Bhakti Zoom Seva team. Uh, so that being said, uh, in a, I was back to my point, which is that we can, um, measure something by where a person is in referencing. So when I spoke in service to Harikata for Gaur Panim, I wanted to, in my own interest as well, because everything is always for our own edification, speak to some unique features of the development of Gaur Lila. One angle of vision was how, if the if you look at the fifth verse of Adi Lila, Srila Krishna Skaviraj Goswami analyzes the unfoldment of the praying of Radha Krishna. And I was speaking to the point, it's the unfoldment of this praying and the transformation of this praying that is the basis under which the Gora root comes. Because we tend to think about Chaitanya, okay, well, this is an incarnation of Krishna tasting the mood of Radhika, etc. So that's also true. But here he's saying, Shri Radha Krishna Pranoy Vikriti Ladini Shakti Ashman. So understanding the depth of what is the meaning of Ladini Shakti Ashman, Vikriti. That the essence of praying, huh? Ladini Sara praying, the essence of praying is this Ladini Shakti, is Vikriti, is undergoing a transformation. Ashman. This is the cause of the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Leela is called Prem Purushottam Leela. Right, so I don't want to switch the topic here and give a, again a whole class on, on Gorbanim. But my point was discussing these things and a second topic was the Sakshitwa means the mood of witnessing by Krishna of himself tasting these moods was two angles of vision I want to speak on for my own edification and because of having heard that kata and having seen some things in the tika of our Guru Vargas, I wanted to speak on that, right? But what I did was ahead of time prepared all the references from where I gleaned those things so that devotees could go back and take a look uh, one lecture of Srila Gurudev in Mathura in 2000, in the commentary of Srila Siddhar Swami uh, Bhavarta Deepika, that's the commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, original commentary. Uh, he writes about how Krishna has become the moon, which is part of the kata I gave, so forth, so on. So I put the references for all the things that I spoke, right? So that devotees would have the ability to go back and look at it. So in giving some idea, when somebody speaks Hari Kata, if you want to understand how they arrived at that level of speaking, you can inquire, oh, Papuji, from where, or oh, Didi, from where have you heard, Maharaj, from where have you heard, such, such, and such. And with great humility and friendship, because you're speaking to Vaishnava Vaishnavis. Not a challenging mood that we are the Harikata police, and I need to check your credentials, etc., etc. So we don't want to be like that either. All right, so I think that was done. I think I can do one more. Let me open it up, get to that question. Oh, I kind of dealt with this just now, actually. Uh, th this one was about devotees speaking their realizations. And they gave me a quote. Uh, I, I didn't copy the quote because I always paraphrase these things before I do these because sometimes the writings that I actually get in Messenger are long. But the devotee mentions there that Srila Prabhupada said, uh, and I know my god, uh, my god uncle, my senior Bhumipati Prabhu, he mentions this a lot, that Srila Prabhupada said, better than reading is hearing and explaining, right? So obviously, also our tries to mention, one should hear Harikata, study the books, and then one should speak in their own words, right? And hear speaking your own words means, what have you understood from it? So that indicates what realization you've had from it. Of course, Srila Jiva Goswami Pad says, the meaning of hearing is, Shrav, Shravan Dwaram Anubhuti Bhavati. So Shravan Dwaram, the doorway to actually true hearing, is Anubhuti Bhavati, means there should be an epiphany or some realization when you hear something. And that has different levels of nuance, but basically, let's take it at that level. When you hear, there should be some realizations. And everybody's had those moments of connecting the dots. You may hear something and say, oh, that's how that is, right? So that is a first appearance on the chitta of the connecting of the dots, which is a popular word that we all use, a phrase, right? And that gives like, an oh, that's what that is, right? Secondly, in your bhajan sadhan, that becomes an impression in the chitta that gives rise to, again, the echoing of many deeper and deeper meanings. You understand? So this is how devotees speak from the point of realization. And again, we've already dealt with in the previous question how that has to be foundationed by Tattva Siddhant. It is mentioned that you cannot build a palace of rasa on top of sand because the sand shifts. That means if you don't have steadiness in bhajan life, you have no foundation of Tattva Siddhant, then your palace of describing, oh, Radha Krishna this, Radha Krishna that, etc. will be very shaky. And also, because it is shaky, it will certainly become perhaps imbued with some misconception. You understand? Because if somebody will ask you something, you're speaking about the nature of Radhika's love is so high. What is that love? How is Rupa Goswami Pad described that love? What is the nature of that love? First, these things should be investigated by inquiry and by study in association with some senior mature devotees, etc. Ideally with realized Vaishnavas, right? But to have some Siddhantic understanding and therefore your platform for speaking about that thing has a basis that you can lean on. Other than that, it may become shaky and then maybe you'll try to fill in a gap here and there with some conjecture, <laughs> right? And then that everything will be spoiled. 
You understand? This is a good example of Bengali Brahmin. Wrote a very apparently nice poem about Lord Jagannath, but when Mr. Damodar heard that poem, he completely, no, this is nonsense. <laughs> really, this was two, twofold. This pastime was to check the rise of pride in that Brahmin, right? Because other devotees had also heard it and thought it was nice, the poem. But Swarup Damodar wanted that he should first have his heart purified of any pride because he wanted Sriman Mahaprabhu to hear it. And we know that Sri Swarup Damodar would always check anything before it was taken to Mahaprabhu, that there's no rasabhas, there is no uh, absence of proper siddhant, everything. He would always check everything to make sure nothing came across Mahaprabhu's vision that did not become anukul to Mahaprabhu's mood. Understand? So, yes, devotees should speak from realization. Try to understand something and then to speak it in your own words, indicating that you've digested it and you have some clear understanding of the thing. Right? It does not have to always be in Sanskrit language or Bengali language or this or that. It can be as you've understood it, period. That's the real ideal. Right? Because, you know, I, I'm very far away from having true uh, scholarship in Sanskrit language because it is such a complicated language and I'm, you know, I'm pushing 70 years old here. <laughs> I'm not in a position to perhaps wish that, you know, maybe in my 20s I had spent so much time. Uh, I had the fortune of learning Devanagar and everything when I was preaching in Africa and that helped to generate some ability to read and then to try to study. But there's so many different nuances in grammar and so many different things. So I've always tried to rely on uh, having someone to help me in terms of teaching in that regard and uh, asking questions to those who have studied Sanskrit language in a, in a significant way and so forth and so on. But the point here being that the understanding is most important. That's the real thing. Uh, because the understanding is what is the basis of your realization, not linguistics, not... Because even you have to remember that Shukracharya, our Sriman Mahadev, played the role of Shukracharya, not, not Shukracharya, I'm sorry, Shankaracharya, right? And through Sanskrit language completely defeated the whole idea that God is a person, <laughs> right? So it's not in the language that the absolute truth is present. It's in understanding the language in relation to Seva to Bhagavan, that is the language. And then Sri Guru and Bhagavan grant realization by their Kripa. Bhakti is granting by her Kripa realization, right? So it's also not dependent just on knowledge of Sanskrit language, etc., etc. Hmm? All right, I think that is um, the totality of what I can offer on those things. Uh, I do have a few other questions that I'll try to catch up over the course of uh, some of the days to come. Um, I do plan to travel this year rather than to have a bhakti intensive every year we're having bhakti intensive here in florida but i think this year i will travel uh instead of having the bhakti intensive this year and so i'm hoping to see some of the persons who are coming on now obviously those who live in alachua i always see you and by your mercy i'm able to render some service here but when i travel also i hope to meet personally some people maybe i've not seen personally um and as we get closer to that time of travel, I'll try to point out the places that I'll be going. I know a lot of it is the East Coast and perhaps in the later part of some of the uh, West. I don't know how far West. That's the question. <laughs> Getting across Texas is always a huge thing. And whether I would go out of the country or not, I don't know. If I did go out, I probably would go to Trinidad uh, because there's so many nice devotees there. So forth. nice devotees everywhere, but... Um, I want to have the darshan of one friend that I have there, one friend is disciple, but he's, I consider like friend always. Uh, and if not, maybe I'll try to see how he can come here and so forth and so on. So so anyways, this is my aspiration. So I'm actually, please give me your mercy, pray to Shishi, Shi, Guru Runga, uh, both health and everything aligns that I can do that, save. But I'm always appealing to the mercy of the Vaishnavas uh, in this way. All right, Dandavat Pranam, Vancha Kalpa Turvisha, Kripa Sindhuva Evicha, Patitanam Pavanavi Vishnavi Vyonamonamaha, Jai Radhe Radhe.